Bois Cayman uprising marked the beginning of the greatest slave revolt in the history of the New World. It took the slaves just two years to win their freedom, forcing the French to abolish slavery. Haiti was run by the great general Toussaint Louverture, still as a French colony, but free of slavery. But in 1802, the French, under Napoleon Bonaparte, reversed the emancipation of the slaves. Toussaint was tricked and arrested and then sent to a French prison where he died in exile. The Haitians rose up against the French once again to stop the reimposition of slavery. At Vertier, just outside Cap Haitien, the Haitian forces under Jean-Jacques Dessalines, Toussaint's successor, routed the French army for the last time. This brilliant general, a former slave himself, was determined that slavery would never return to Haiti. When he declared independence on January 1st, 1804, his stirring words left nothing to chance. The pain of slavery mm -hmm. is such that whenever you're making an analysis of Haiti or the Haitian, it is there that you have to go back to. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that the quest for equality and the quest for freedom was so great that those guys, in fact, wrote it down and said that they would rather die mm -hmm. than go back to slavery. Mm -hmm. With the French expelled, the Haitian people rejected everything that reminded them of slavery. They systematically destroyed all the, all the means of production. Mm -hmm. Anything that had to do with slavery was destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, and we destroyed if, the whole drainage system, mm -hmm. the road system, uh, the investment into the machinery for sugar, mm -hmm. and the gotui, and even coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, it was solely the notion of individual survival, family survival. Bodies lay strewn in the streets of Haitian capital Port-au-Prince on Tuesday after a magnitude 7 earthquake left hundreds if not thousands feared dead. With an epicenter just 16 kilometres from the capital city, many were trapped in the rubble. Survivors desperately tried to help the injured, while some screamed in shock at the sight of the destruction. In Hawaii, U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton pledged the nation's full assistance. We are still gathering information about uh, this uh, catastrophic earthquake, the point of impact, its effect on the people of Haiti. The United States is offering our full assistance to Haiti and to others in the region. Uh, we will be providing both civilian and military disaster relief and humanitarian assistance and our prayers are with the people who have suffered, uh, their families uh, and their loved ones.
Finally tonight, poetry amid the rubble. Jeffrey Brown has the last of his reports from his recent trip to Haiti, one year after the earthquake. In Carrefour, the sprawling area of almost half a million on the outskirts of Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, scenes of destruction from last year's earthquake are everywhere. But also, perhaps unexpectedly, there are voices raised not in anger, but in verse. We are conscious of the image people say Haiti is projecting. That's why we took the initiative to assemble our strengths and talents. Like it or not, it's only through culture and literature that we can question our problems as a nation and as human beings. Even so, Haiti has a thriving and long-standing literary tradition. Evelyn Trouillot, from a family of writers and intellectuals, is a professor, novelist, and poet. You can see it's a country that is so, so full of complexities that I have enough things to write about it. <laughs> I don't have to look elsewhere. But at the same it, time, Haiti keeps you busy <laughs> it enough, keeps right? me busy. Haiti is a place that most of us only see when there's a, a disaster. Now it's the earthquake. What, what, what don't we see? What don't we know about Haiti? And even for us Asian, it's very difficult to explain to somebody Haiti because uh, it's like we have one country and inside that country we have a lot of realities so different, so opposite, so contradictory that it's very difficult to see in one visit or in one lifetime. And we have to, to face the reality that Haiti is a poor country where people don't eat when they are hungry, where they, are, they don't have the basic, they have the basic to live a decent life. But Haiti is much more than that. And even the people in poverty knows that, know that Haiti is much more than that. But how has that culture adapted in the years since the earthquake struck? In a rubble-strewn alleyway in Port-au-Prince, sculptor Eugene Jean Robert and his students create art from cast-off bits of metal, wood, and rubber. In Haiti, we are a people of art. He says his country's catastrophe and the mood of the people today have changed the focus of his work. Before the earthquake, I concentrated on images of death, but because so many people were killed in the earthquake, now I'm concentrating on life, because life is more important than death. At the Galerie Monin in Pechonville, some of the best-known Haitian painters display their works. Carlo Jean-Baptiste canvases are allegories of destruction. A robed figure, its head replaced by a concrete block, pokes through earthquake rubble as letters spelling out Haiti fall from the sky. A grieving woman carries the body of a child wrapped in the colors of the Haitian flag. 88-year-old Préfet Dufault is considered by many Haiti's greatest living artist. At his modest home outside Port-au-Prince, he showed paintings he's done since the quake. In contrast with the darker themes of other artists, Dufault's work is filled with images of hope and salvation. I feel I have more power now, more imagination. My mind is full of ideas. I feel I'm in direct communication with God, God who gave me life. 